People often associate roses with captivating beauty, but also with sharp, dangerous thorns. That beauty is no different from Yi Bao Wen, a 19-year-old girl once praised as the school beauty, known for her innocent and gentle appearance. But behind that innocent facade, who could have guessed that she was the one who dismembered her lover into six parts and preserved them with salt? What could have driven a young girl to commit such a brutal act? To understand the truth, let's go back 25 years to uncover the whole story. On the morning of February 14, 1999, Liu Chung walked into the police station with a tense face. He reported that his close friend, Zhang Wei Wen, 25, had mysteriously disappeared for three days. He recounted the events as follows. In February 1999, he lived with his close friend Zhang Wei Wen and Zhang's girlfriend Yi Bao Wen in apartment number 2936 on the 29th floor of the Hingtai building in Tuen Mun. The three of them had lived together for a long time without any issues until February 9, 1999. That evening, Zhang Wei Wen suddenly called Liu Zhucheng to talk. According to Liu, this was a rare occurrence as Zhang was normally a reserved and quiet person. After some hesitation, Zhang Wei Wen began sharing his suspicions. Yi Bao Wen, the girlfriend he deeply loved, might be having an affair. This revelation left Liu Zhicheng confused, as he had previously seen Yi Bao Wen with a strange man in Yuan Lang. Initially, Liu didn't want to bring it up, fearing it would break their relationship. However, under Zhang Wei Wen's urging, Liu Zhicheng eventually decided to tell the truth. Upon hearing this, Zhang Wei Wen's face darkened. He decided to confront Yi Bao Wen about it that very night. Understanding that the couple needed space to resolve the issue, Liu Zhicheng left the apartment. By the early morning of February 10th, Liu Zhicheng returned hoping that everything had been resolved. But as soon as he reached the door, he heard intense arguing from inside. Zhang Wei Wen's hoarse voice was crying out, Don't, don't hit, mixed with the sound of the TV. Liu Zhicheng immediately knocked on the door, but no one responded. Undeterred, Liu Zhicheng knocked a second time, but this time the TV volume was abruptly turned up, drowning out all other sounds. He tried to calm the situation by calling out that he had plans to drink with Zhang Wei Wen to separate the two, but from inside, Yi Bao Wen shouted for him to leave. Liu Zhicheng stood outside the door for a while, thinking. He then made an excuse that his phone had run out of battery and needed to go inside. Eventually, Yi Bao Wen opened the door, but only enough to hand him a charger before slamming it shut again. Frustrated, Liu Zhicheng banged on the door, but it still didn't open. The music inside continued to grow louder. Liu Zhicheng knew that whenever the couple fought, violence was often involved. He considered calling the police, but his fear that Zhang Wei Wen might get into trouble because of past incidents made him hesitate. Exhausted and unwilling to intervene further, Liu decided to leave, hoping they would resolve things on their own. Suspiciously, over the next three days, Liu Zhicheng kept texting Zhang Wei Wen, but received no response. The prolonged silence made him increasingly worried. By February 13th, Liu Zhicheng decided he could wait no longer. He went straight to apartment 2936. However, it was Yi Bao Wen who opened the door. Before Liu could say anything, she coldly stood in the doorway and firmly said, Zhang Wei Wen is not here, don't come back. Not stopping there, she threw Liu Zhicheng's belongings outside as if to completely sever all ties. The situation happened so abruptly that Liu Zhicheng was left bewildered. Sensing that something was wrong, he didn't rush home but quietly observed from outside. On the morning of February 14th, something strange happened. Yi Bao Wen left the apartment carrying two large plastic bags, accompanied by an unfamiliar woman who helped her load them into a truck. 
All that day, Liu Zhicheng did not see any sign of Jiang Weiwen. At this point, Liu Zhicheng knew that to understand what was happening, he had to enter the apartment. He remembered that Zhang Weiwen had once left a spare key with a neighbor on the same floor. He quickly went to borrow the key. But when he tried to open the door, Liu realized that the lock had been changed. With no other options, Liu Zhicheng decided to contact Zhang Weiwen's younger brother. Upon hearing the news, the younger brother also found the situation extremely suspicious. So the two decided to report the case to the police. After receiving the report, the police quickly arrived at the scene and coordinated with the fire department to break open the apartment door. As soon as the door was opened, they were met with a room in complete disarray, filled with scattered belongings. However, after thoroughly searching the apartment, the investigative team found no trace of Jiang Wei Win. At that moment, one of the officers noticed an old iron box, locked and tucked away in a corner of the room. Although Liu Zhicheng explained that it was just a toolbox, the experienced investigators sensed something was off. They asked the fire department to cut the lock and check inside the box. As soon as the lid was opened, a foul stench filled the air, causing everyone present to shudder. Inside, they were shocked to find the body of Jiang Wei Wen, crudely preserved under a thick layer of coarse salt. Even more horrifying, his body had been dismembered into six parts, including the head, arms, legs, and other sections. The police immediately sealed off the scene and launched a thorough investigation. Based on Liu Zhicheng's testimony, the investigative team focused on tracking down Zhang Wei Wen's girlfriend, Yi Bao Wen, who had been living with him. However, the situation became more complicated when they discovered that Yi Bao Wen and Zhang Wei Wen had a four year old child together, named Yi Yong Yu. The child was also missing along with Yi Bao Wen. To track down Yi Bao Wen, the police quickly contacted her family and friends, but remarkably, no one had any information about her or the child. In addition, the investigative team also interrogated Chen Shi Hui, the woman who had been seen leaving the apartment with Yi Bao Wen that morning. However, she claimed to know nothing about the incident. In short, all efforts failed to provide any useful leads leaving the investigation at a standstill. It was clear that this was a serious murder case, and the police understood that they could not let it go cold. Thus, on the same evening that Zhang Wei Wen's body was discovered, they swiftly issued a nationwide arrest warrant for Yi Bao Wen. Three days after the case shocked the public, on the night of February 17, 1999, a young man named Liu Junhua came forward to provide information at the police station. He stated that Yi Bao Wen was his ex-girlfriend, but they had maintained a normal friendship after their breakup. On the morning of February 10th, Yi Bao Wen had called him, asking him to help her move some things and buy a new knife because the one in her apartment had broken. Without suspicion, Liu Junhua willingly helped. However, after seeing the case heavily reported in the news, Yi Bao Wen called Liu and confessed that she was the one who had killed Zhang Wei Wen. Despite Liu Junhua's attempts to persuade her to turn herself in and his inquiries about her location, Yi Bao Wen responded hastily and then hung up. After careful thought, Liu Junhua realized that the items he had helped her move might have been tools related to the crime and that he had unknowingly become an accomplice. Thus, he decided to report this to the police. After hearing Liu Junhua's testimony, the police were more convinced than ever that Yi Bao Wen was the killer. They immediately instructed Liu Junhua to try to persuade her to meet up if she contacted him again to aid in the investigation. As expected, not long after, Yi Bao Wen did reach out to Liu Junhua. However, when Liu Junhua tried to arrange a meeting, 
Yi Bao Wen sensed something suspicious in his tone. Growing wary, she immediately refused and cut off all contact. Finally, at 6 a.m. on February 26, 1999, 12 days after the case was brought to light, the police successfully arrested Yi Bao Wen at an apartment on a street in Shanghai. During the arrest, the police also found the four-year-old daughter of Yi Bao Wen and Jiang Wei Wen. The child was quickly taken to the hospital for a health checkup. Surprisingly, after being apprehended, Yi Bao Wen did not attempt to defend or deny her crime. She openly admitted that she had taken Jiang Wei Wen's life with her own hands. To understand the reason behind Yi Bao Wen's decision to kill her boyfriend, Zhang Wei Wen, the police had to delve deep into their relationship. Yi Bao Wen and Zhang Wei Wen met when she was just 14 years old. At that time, she was an outstanding student, admired for her beauty, and even invited to appear in TV commercials. In contrast, Zhang Wei Wen, who was older, had dropped out of school early to work and live on his own. One day in 1994, Yi Bao Wen went to a karaoke bar with friends and coincidentally met Zhang Wei Wen, who worked there. From their first meeting, Zhang Wei Wen was captivated by Yi Bao Wen's beauty and quickly fell in love with her. They became friends, and gradually, both began spending time together with their group of friends at Zhang Wei Wen's apartment. However, at a gathering under the influence of alcohol, Zhang Wei Wen raped Yi Bao Wen. Surprisingly, instead of reporting to the police or seeking help, Yi Bao Wen chose to remain silent and even entered a romantic relationship with Zhang Wei Wen after the incident. By the end of the year, Yi Bao Wen discovered she was pregnant with Zhang Wei Wen. Upon hearing the news, Zhang was extremely worried and quickly decided that they had to abort the baby. He is afraid that if the child is born, his sexual relations with a minor will result in him facing the law. Furthermore, both of them do not have the financial means to raise children. Initially, they sought a doctor to terminate the pregnancy. However, a health examination revealed that Yi Bao Wen's health was too fragile and an abortion could be life-threatening. With no other options, they decided to have the baby and figure things out afterward. During her pregnancy, Yi Bao Wen cleverly hid her condition by wearing loose clothing, so her family, friends, and teachers never suspected anything. By May 1995, as the baby was about to be born, they knew going to the hospital was not an option. Yi Bao Wen had to give birth in the bathroom. Fortunately, the birth went smoothly and a healthy baby girl was born. They named her Yi Yong Yu. After Yi Yong Yu's birth, Zhang Wei Wen and Yi Bao Wen decided to raise the baby at Zhang Wei Wen's home. However, life was incredibly difficult. Yi Bao Wen was still in school while Zhang was lazy and enjoyed playing around. The cost of raising Yi Yong Yu largely depended on Yi Bao Wen's meager monthly allowance, but it wasn't nearly enough, so Yi Bao Wen had to take up part time jobs. Despite the hardships, Yi Bao Wen tried her best to balance her studies and her role as a young mother. However, this quickly became an overwhelming burden for her. Later, to care for her daughter Yi Yong Yu, Yi Bao Wen lied to her parents, asking to move out but in reality, she moved in with Zhang Wei Wen. She even gave up her opportunity to attend college after graduation to care for her child. During this time, Yi Bao Wen gave birth to two more children in 1996 and 1997. At that point, both realized that raising three children was too much of a burden for them. Yi Bao Wen and Zhang Wei Wen made a heart-wrenching decision to abandon the two newborns, one at a train station and the other outside a hospital. The pressure of raising children not only increased the tension, but also caused the relationship between Yi Bao Wen and Zhang Wei Wen to deteriorate. They frequently argued, 
and Zhang even began to display violent behavior toward Yi Bao Wen. The escalating conflict led Yi Bao Wen to seek comfort in other relationships. In January 1998, Yi Bao Wen was helping her uncle sell candy at a Lunar New Year fair when she happened to meet Liu Junhua, a customer. Captivated by Yi Bao Wen's beauty and charm, Liu Junhua immediately approached her and started a conversation. They quickly became a couple. However, after a few months, Yi Bao Wen decided to end the relationship, fearing that Zhang Wei Wen would find out. Nevertheless, she and Liu Junhua remained friends and occasionally met. Notably, Liu Junhua had no idea that Yi Bao Wen had a boyfriend and a daughter. But the affair with Liu Junhua wasn't the main cause of the tragedy that would later unfold. It was her next relationship. In April 1998, after breaking up with Liu Junhua, Yi Bao Wen happened to meet Shu Xu Hung while shopping with her sister. Shu Xu Hung, a tall, strong firefighter with dark skin, immediately caught Yi Bao Wen's attention. Attracted by his appearance and strength, Yi Bao Wen took the initiative to approach him. Shu Xu Hung, charmed by her youthful boldness, quickly fell for her, and they began dating. Yi Bao Wen's relationship with Shu Xu Hung continued for several months, but by November 1998, Zhang Wei Wen, her boyfriend, started noticing something unusual. He realized that she frequently made excuses to go out, claiming she was meeting friends. This change made Zhang Wei Wen uneasy, and he began to monitor her actions, even asking her to send her location every time she left the house. Though there was no concrete evidence of infidelity, Zhang Wei Wen couldn't shake the suspicions that constantly haunted him. Finally, on February 9, 1999, unable to contain his anxiety any longer, Zhang Wei Wen confided in his close friend Liu Zhicheng about his suspicions regarding Yi Bao Wen. What followed unfolded according to Liu Zhicheng's account. At the investigation agency, Yi Bao Wen recounted the process of committing the crime as follows. According to her statement, everything began when Zhang Wei Wen discovered her infidelity. Zhang Wei Wen's anger quickly escalated, and he brutally punched and kicked Yi Bao Wen. In a panic and in self defense, Yi Bao Wen used a knife, a hammer, and a folding chair to fight back. In the struggle, she unintentionally inflicted severe injuries on Zhang, especially fatal blows to the head, which led to his death. However, instead of calling the police afterward, Yi Bao Wen conceived the idea of dismembering Zhang Wei Wen's body to dispose of it. Since there wasn't a large and sharp enough knife in the house to do so, she called her ex-boyfriend Liu Junhua, asking him to buy a new knife and come over to help move some heavy items. Without any suspicion, Liu Junhua agreed to help her. At the police station, when asked how she could coldly dismember the victim's body, Yi Bao Wen candidly replied that she only wanted to protect her daughter, Yi Yongyu. She feared that seeing her father's body would traumatize the young girl. Yi Bao Wen's plan was to hide Zhang Wei Wen's body in an iron box that was already in the apartment. However, the box was too small to contain the entire body, forcing her to dismember it into several parts before placing them inside. To prevent the smell of decomposition from spreading, she temporarily preserved the body with salt. One year after the incident, on February 23, 2000, Yi Bao Wen's case was officially tried at the High Court. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison for manslaughter and obstructing the burial of a body. Due to good behavior, Yi Bao Wen was released in 2009. After her release, she chose to live in anonymity, refusing to contact or reunite with her daughter, Yi Yongyu. At the time of Yi Bao Wen's imprisonment, Yi Yongyu, 
who was only four years old, was placed in an orphanage and later adopted by a family. Despite growing up in difficult circumstances, she seemed to inherit her mother's intelligence and achieved excellent academic results. However, by the age of 15, Yi Yong Yu's life began to take a dark turn. Once an outstanding student, she started rebelling, neglecting her studies, and falling into a life of debauchery. By the age of 20, Yi Yong Yu was arrested for drug trafficking. At her trial, Judge Pan Zhao Tong expressed sympathy for the young woman's tragic past, being a child who had witnessed the horrific death of her father and the arrest of her mother right before her eyes. However, he emphasized that drug trafficking was an extremely serious crime for which leniency could not be granted. In the end, Yi Yong Yu was sentenced to five years and eight months in prison. In my personal view, this case is not just a tragedy of Yi Bao Wen, but a generational chain of tragedy, extending from the mother to the daughter, Yi Yong Yu. This case serves as a reminder of the crucial role of the family in nurturing and educating children. Parental care and guidance not only help children avoid mistakes, but also provide a foundation for healthy development.